best and most blessed greetings of divine peace and light. Assalamu alaikum, beloved brothers and sisters. This is Ihsan, and this is Soul of Islam Radio. The Messenger of God, the Prophet Muhammad, the last and final of God's great prophets and messengers to humanity, stated that God himself has stated, when a servant of mine takes a step towards me, I take ten steps towards him or her. And when he or she comes to me walking, I move towards them at speed. Julian Drolin, originally from France and who has a background in entertainment, music, and media production, realized that there was far more to life than the illusory and temporary distractions of the world and that evil and Satan are real. And so he began seeking God, eventually walking a thousand kilometers across Spain in a sacred search for truth. By God's divine will and grace, he ultimately found his way and was guided to Islam, the last place he had initially thought to look for God and for truth. Since then, he met his wife Zara Shafi in Malaysia, and together they founded Halas Media, a film and media production company dedicated to sharing the gift of faith with the world. Their professionally produced documentary film, Freedom, has been met with universal praise in which they have interviewed some 50 converts to Islam and who constitute a diverse and global group of people showing the profound, beautiful, and universal appeal and applicability of the faith. They are currently working on their next major production, entitled The Last Hope, which is based on the impact of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, in the lives of human beings and believers, particularly in the day and age in which we now live, and which is due out with the will of God later this year. I recently had the opportunity to sit down and have an enlightening conversation with Julian and his wife Sara about not only their work, but so much more. We discussed Julian's journey to Islam, how they met as a couple and married, the critical role of media in the world today and the absolute need and necessity to support production projects and faith-based content, the way of the heart and the role of spirituality in the religion, knowledge of the self, and the axial age in which we live, and much more. Beloved brothers and sisters, following is our conversation together. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, beloved Soul of Islam radio listeners. This is Hassan. And I'm very happy, very excited, very honored to be here with Julian Drolan and his wife, Zara Shafi, who are the founders of Halas Media. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. Uh, Jolan, Brother Jolan, we'll cut that out. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. Brother Julian is uh, is doing amazing work in terms of a lot of the documentaries that they're producing. His wife, Zara, mashallah, have helped them in supporting and, and a core component of the team that is making Halas Media. Uh, welcome, Julian and Sister Zara. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you for, uh, having us. for inviting us on your podcast. And we are very also honored and uh, blessed to have this conversation in the, this holy month of Ramadan. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, may Allah bless it. And so before I jump into some of the work that you guys are doing, Brother Julian, Sister Zara, um, you've got a very interesting story of your coming to Islam. I mean, essentially, you walked a thousand kilometers in search for God. And there's this beautiful hadith, hadith Qudsi, in fact, in which Allah is saying through the Prophet, وسلم, or the Prophet is narrating that Allah is saying, if you take a step towards me, I will take 10 mm-hmm. steps towards you. So you took many, many steps towards God. And yeah. uh, in fact, a thousand kilometers worth of steps. And eventually he led you to Islam. Um, coming from my French background, and we know that, I mean, I see just from the media that I see the little snippets uh, the French public or or the the image of Islam in France doesn't seem to be very positive. How mm. did you end up, you know, very briefly, just share with us, how did you come to Islam? And then also, how did you guys meet? Bismillah ar uh, Well, regarding my journey, you know, as I always say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts many seeds in your path to make this plant of faith to grow. And for me, uh, I, I was blessed to travel at a very young age, at uh, 18 years old, after my high school diploma, I, uh, I traveled to Australia, I learned English for one year, and then I always tried to leave abroad uh, because France became a godless nation uh, in one generation. It happened very fast between my grandparents and my mother uh, generation, my parents' generation. So there was something lacking and uh, 
I had the opportunity to study also in the uh, in United States uh, for six months in Memphis. Uh, then I got my first job in Spain. And then I became an international travel reporter and I started to work in some Muslim countries like uh, UAE. Uh, I was sent to also Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. Uh, so I think it started by listening to the Azan. It started by uh, being acquainted with Muslims. And because I was not living in France, uh for half of my life uh this uh, islamophobic narrative didn't really affect me you know i, I was not too much uh, implicated in that and i ended up in the philippines with arguably one of the biggest christian practicing country in the world right now with churches um, uh, masses every 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 day in malls and they reconnecting me with god you know i started to go back to the church after a while i almost baptized again and then after of uh, months of research, I, I realized Islam was the truth. And, I, and uh, before that, I did this one, this famous 1,000 kilometer journey. Um, but I don't want to say too much. I want to introduce my wife and I want her to also uh, explain how we Thank met. You. And then after I can, I can share. Uh, this journey was very, very interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write a book about it or I will make a film about it. But definitely it's one of the key things of my my search, you know, I even went to Mexico to with um, a guru. Uh, I, I drink ayahuasca in the Amazonia. I so it's more than Christianity and Buddhism. Yeah. You know, I I tried many type of spirituality, and it ended up to to Islam. And Alhamdulillah, even within Islam, there are so much things that you need to understand. And I always say. Islam is like a university, but you, you still need to choose the right course mm -hmm. if you want to graduate, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. How did we meet? How did we meet? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. So, as he said just now, he became Muslim in the Philippines. It was 2012. Um, I myself, uh, I was a born Muslim, as a majority of Malaysians are, but I would say my, I'm a reborn Muslim. I wasn't necessarily practicing before. Uh, I was praying. I was covering my head but I didn't really know what it what it was about and there was no spirituality to it I was just doing it because I was probably scared of my parents you know so uh, I think I went off track a little bit uh, in some part of my life uh, to the point that I actually questioned whether Islam is the truth and I kind of looked at Christianity actually and Buddhism um, because I think there is a lot of there are a lot of um, ways that Islam being practiced right now that is lacking spirituality. So then you you don't, that's why you start to look uh, in others. So that's what I, I was doing a little bit. And then I I, I think one, t one time somebody was asking me about Islam, like to, like, what is it about? And I, I, and I realized I was just saying the pillars and what we do and do not do. But I can't really explain I realized I can't explain my own religion. So I started to uh, learn about it and then I started to rediscover it. And actually the same time he um, became Muslim, uh, I also became reborn Muslim. And then we met two years after mm -hmm. um, when he made Hijra to Malaysia because he felt like he could not practice really in the Philippines um, because of community. You know, Islam is about community as well. So it, he was struggling by himself as a new convert. So he moved to Malaysia. Uh, we met at an event. Um, yeah. yeah. And then we just... But had... you, you basically gave up a big job in Petronas. Yeah. We I are was... now facing the Petronas Towers <laughs> in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. She used to work in those towers. And she. what impressed me is that she, she was a, an engineer and she could have made a big career in Petronas. Uh, uh including like some of a member of a family but she joined I was, I was about to be promoted yeah. uh, to another department that would have put me on track with the yeah. corporate world and i gave up that job because something just didn't feel right in my heart and i wanted to do something that is more fulfilling so when i so I, we went to the same event he was feeling the same from philippines and we met there and we met three times and then we discovered i learned french two years before without no you know reason. it's so amazing he was a singer um, i was a singer and it just we have both sense. scottish blood yeah we didn't know that my grandmother is scottish uh, great grandfather is scottish so you know this is really Allah's planning uh when she asked me uh okay I agreed to marry you, but you need to still ask my father the permission. I said, okay, where is he? He's, uh, he was in Jeddah at the time. 
It just happened I bought a ticket to Jeddah one week before she tells me that to do my Umrah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's so powerful. I actually, one day I told her, please write all the signs yeah. Yeah. that really confirm that the, this this um, this nikah, this wedding was made in, 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 in Jannah and that was our destiny to meet. And uh, We felt familiar. We felt like we've known each other yeah. for a while. And in Ramadan, actually, there was another story. It happened in Ramadan 2000. 12. 12. 13. 13. 13. I went to Iktikaf in the masjid. He was also in the same masjid, but I was on the second floor. We didn't know each other. And in the Iktikaf, he particularly asked for a wife. Mm. And I was in the same masjid. She was we, in the same building. We yeah. discovered months after we got married. We didn't know before that. Yeah. yeah. Allah Karim, Allah is uh, most generous and subhanAllah, that, this would make a very valuable part of the story of your journey and, and the whole story. I'm sure people would be very interested. So I'm glad you said uh, something here, Sister Zara. You talked about uh, becoming coming back to Islam, becoming a born-again Muslim or re reborn into Islam. I actually have a video on this topic specifically um, where I recommend that like we have to actually consciously choose Islam because so many of us have been born into Islam but don't really yeah. understand, never consciously chose the religion. So we inherited it, but we don't truly understand it. And so, I mean, you know, Julian, for example, you have this amazing ni'ma from Allah that you that you consciously chose Islam. And I, I recommend as well, this is something that all of us as Muslims must do at some point in our lives, consciously choose this religion, be born again into it. Um, the other thing that you guys mentioned here, which I'd like to dive, dive into, is the topic of spirituality and yeah. the role of spirituality in, in the faith and in the religion. Um, this is something that I focus on quite a bit, and I'm curious to hear from you, from you guys. Where, what do you see the role of spirituality? How do you define spirituality, and, and what is the role of it um, in religion in general, and specifically within Islam? That's a deep uh, question. Uh, but for me, I always say spirituality is like for the French, you know, in cooking, is like the sauce. <laughs> it's like what it's what makes Islam beautiful. It's what makes Islam memorable and you want to always come back at it you know so yeah. uh, you know the 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 law the sharia everything is kind of the raw product but without the sauce you can't really eat it you know like fresh people we don't like to eat without sauce we're known it for that it would be very dry it would be very dry so spirituality right. is the um, is the is the link and it's it's mainly given to you through the prophet muhammad is is the one who who through um, his teaching, through his adab, through uh, you know all his wisdom, is is giving us this this uh, this uh, spirituality. You know, like basically, spirituality helps you to connect to the to the other hearts. You know, spirituality is you can't really connect with laws or you know, like it's just a fact. It's there. You do it. You don't do it. But when you have spirituality, you can connect with the soul, with the with, with the heart of someone else. So in order to develop that spirituality, you need to, to do certain things, uh, you know, uh, including zikr or anything that kind of make your heart softer and, you know, to get into a space where you can literally talk with your heart. And, mm. and that's what we are learning also that we, 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 we know uh, in science also that there is two types of brain. There's the mental brain and there's the heart brain. Mm -hmm. And the heart brain is much far superior because it can di distinguish between hak and batil and which sometimes the brain cannot you know so this whole world is focusing on the uh, on the brain yeah. yeah but not too much on, on the heart intelligence which is far superior and as Pantar tells us in the quran uh, he wants us to return with a clean heart yeah which means it's through spirituality that you can develop that cleanness you know it's so inshallah i hope this is a good answer, <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, it's a very broad topic. And uh, for me, this is what makes Islam um, sweet, sweet, enjoyable, uh, meaningful, purposeful. Yeah. That's why we have people who focus a lot about science, you know, because science comes with spirituality. So what does it mean is we pay attention. We try to understand what Allah wants from us on a daily basis. What are the signs he's sending to us? in order for us to be guided. I think spirituality has a lot to do with Hidayah. You know, the more, the more you develop your spirituality, the more guidance you receive from Allah, the more you're going to be able to perform what you're supposed to perform on this earth, which is basically the will of Allah. And you must align yourself with it, focusing on, on, on the, the good things that he gave you that you can give to the world. And 
and mm -hmm. only spirituality can really tap into this potential i think Inshallah. that's actually a very beautiful answer my, my teacher my sheikh used to describe spirituality as the way of the heart the path of the heart mm -hmm. of awakening of the heart and of also as you mentioned i'm glad you mentioned this as well brother julian about the possibilities for consciousness in the both the brain as well as in the heart and there's actually a lot of research being done in this field now like for example by the heart math institute to show the capacity for the heart and um the field that even it creates based on its state and how that affects uh let's say others around and how hearts can actually communicate with other hearts and we have some traditions i won't go into it now but there are even some traditions to this effect um in the sunnah and the seerah of the prophet and the sahaba and in any case so this is a beautiful description of spirituality because we have the mind, which relates to the world of matter and, and science, and then we have the heart, which relates to the realm of spirit. We've always learned that we must have both of these to be effective, to be complete, to be whole. Is that is that pretty much in line with like the what you're trying? Would you agree with that? Well, something I discovered a couple of years ago is that the, there's two type of knowledge. There is um, uh, the um, the acquired knowledge, hmm. and there's the intrinsic knowledge. So acquired knowledge is um, something that you learn by memorization, by experience. And uh, the knowledge that comes, you know, uh, like Adam al salam he didn't have to do anything to know the, to know the, um, the names, you know. And, and, and this is something that this whole world is focused on, on acquired knowledge. We are stuck into that paradigm. We are stuck into mm. big studies, big PhDs, big diploma, uh, memorizing a lot of books and stuff like that. Whereas... Allah SWT is offering another option, which is to tap into that divine knowledge that is constantly flowing. Mm. And it's an extreme power that has been given to insan, you know? Mm. So I don't know if I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm answering to your question, but I think for me, it's a very important topic because uh, it made sense. And um, the other entities, I won't mention them, but especially the, the big one is focused on that, acquirement, because he was a master, he was a big scholar, he was the, the best of them. So when this interesting knowledge was given to him, he got super jealous because he's how come this one who come from nowhere, uh, is having those knowledge from Allah, how come he can name everything, including the angels didn't know. So this is the thing that I'm trying to develop within myself, not to be stuck too much with acquired knowledge, but try to understand the, the divine wisdom that uh, Aspata is giving to each one of us. Yeah. And, um, and this is basically what Khidr exactly. was teaching Musa Alayhi Salaam. You yeah. know, Musa Alayhi Salaam come with the book. Musa Alayhi Salaam come with, with uh, a lot of knowledge, mashallah. But Aspata wanted to show him that they are, they are people, they are, you know, saints, they are, mm -hmm. uh, that have been given that type of um, knowledge uh, that is, uh, you know, so broad and so vast and you need to also learn from them uh, and this is uh infinite you know that's why it's broader than the ocean and uh yeah if you want to add something about that yeah i think uh, uh i think we what we're trying to focus on uh, primarily is getting to know ourselves because when you know yourself you know your lord right so um the thing that we we try to focus is even in our marriage because we work together and we're we we are doing projects together um, you always have this hadith where marriage is completing half of your deen. People say this a lot, completes half of your deen, half of your deen, half of your deen. But uh, how does it complete half of your deen? I, I never really got that. Like, you know, it's, it doesn't come like automatic like that just because you got married. So uh, because we are each other's garment, we are each other's mirror. Uh, we try to always improve by actually, you know yourself more when you have that relationship with your spouse that is spiritual because you look at it in a way that is like um, you are uh, you are growing together, trying to complete the other half and each other's half. So mm -hmm. this is why uh, spirituality is very important as well as in marriage and family, uh, even with the kids. Because if you if you if you because I, I attended some marriage courses, even in Malaysia, you have like compulsory marriage courses, for example, before you get married and you need to have a certificate before you get married. But it's really about rights, what is the husband rights, what is the yeah. women's right. But but then a lot of the marriages don't are not successful because uh, both of them are asking for their rights. 
Mm-hmm. And you don't ask for rights like that. You know, like I know a lot of couples who are struggling because it's my right or it's your right. So, da, da, da. so they, they go neck to neck with each other, asking for each other's rights. Are you stepping on my rights? Because it's all about mm-hmm. a quiet knowledge that you it, it, it's not necessarily beneficial if you don't have somebody to uh, teach you. And I think Ibn Arabi said that the highest station uh, um, of uh, spirituality is sabr in marriage. Yeah. It's not yeah. it's not like uh, 40 days of retreat. Uh, Sabar in my age is, is according to him daily and the, the, the biggest uh, makam that you can get. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is um, definitely you need spirituality to achieve that. And you need understanding and, and you need a vision. I mean, what make us together uh, doing that is we have a vision. We have a mission. We know I think we are discovering more and more who we are. And uh, that makes things much more simpler. Yeah. So a lot of things you guys mentioned that I'd love to, to dive into if we had the time, but I'll, I'll very briefly say, I mean, you know, so if we think of going back to the idea that there's the outer and the inner, or the, the, the forms and the structures of the religion, as well as the spirituality and its essence, it's easy to learn the, the mechanics of, of the religion, the five pillars, for example, as you're mentioning, Sutsuzara. but it's going to be much more difficult to be patient to control one's anger, to be humble, to be relenting, to be forgiving, and so on. And so, I mean, I personally, I believe this is the meaning behind, right, half the religion. This is where the inner half actually gets developed, whereas the outer half, you you already have um, taken care of. As you were saying this, uh, Julian, Brother Julian, um, I was thinking of this story as well in Surat Al-Kaf of Khidr and Musa, in terms of these two types of knowledge, right? The the academic knowledge, which say the Musa had, Moses and of course, this this knowledge, which is described Allah in the Quran as al Laduni, like knowledge directly from His divine presence, yeah. and that's that's so one is available to the mind, the other one to the heart. And so again, you know, going back to this idea that so much of the heart, so much of the work in the religion is about purifying the heart to be a worthy receptacle of this divine knowledge. When it's empty, Allah may fill it with His light. Inshallah. You mentioned something else, Brother Julian, which I'd like to maybe pivot to which is about um, an unnamed, unseen entity. One of the earliest stories that we were taught, one of the first stories we were taught is the story of the creation of Adam and how, of course, Iblis then opposed the establishment of Adam as the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, who, and he vowed to destroy humanity. He, yeah. he vowed that he's going to dedicate his life until the day of judgment to the destruction of humanity. And uh, I'm astonished how we as human beings um, in general and even us as Muslims tend to live and operate as if this is not happening, as if there is not an unseen being who day and night is plotting our destruction. And we just tend to go along with whatever happens to be happening, let's say in modern culture, popular culture, in the media, without really thinking to what degree is all of this being influenced by by yeah. shaitan. And I remember yeah. in some of the things you were describing in terms of your own journey to Islam, that you you became very aware that this is very real and that yeah. you needed protection and that you would be able to find that in a sacred religion. Maybe if you could speak a bit on that as well. Well, it's interesting because right before this podcast, we're having uh, Iftar with Zara, and I was telling you know, like in the movies, every time they they this this story that uh, there are external people who wants to destroy the people on Earth, mm. cartoon wise, uh, movie wise, and this narrative is on and on. And uh, I was telling her like, who who is sending this message to us? And I said to her, they can't really do it because. Yeah. They don't have access unless we give them the access. And we can't really also influence them much, although the Prophet, when he was reciting the Quran, was able to, you know, touch them and some of them became Muslims. But this is something that is not known uh, that so many people can do that. So at the end of the day, it can only happen if other men are entering into connection with them and they're working together, being traitors of uh, insan. <laughs> To, to allow this to happen. So there must be a partnership between some members of Insan and some member of the gene kind to be able to achieve that goal, which is kind of unfolding under our eyes day by day. You know, it's very subtle, but it's there. So- And we start young, so, all these cartoons. Yeah, so the thing is, me, it's what woke me up. I mean, when, when people ask me why you became Muslim, the main factor is I took, I had a, a really self realization of the the the, the reality of, she, of of Iblis. Before I didn't believe in him. I thought he was Santa Claus uh, type. I thought he was like a, uh, on I, the left shoulder. Yeah, I believed in, I believed in, in God, but honestly, the angels and Iblis, all this type of thing for me was fairy tales. 
But mm. when I realized that he is real and he's alive, he's a real entity, and there are people who are working for him and with him, then I realized that, okay, this is a serious thing and uh, I, I better take uh, Eid, you know? So that was the, the, the beginning of the journey. And I was Buddhist at the time. I was just coming back from a retreat 10 days without talking to anybody. Uh, we were in a group. It was very hard because for, for 10 days, you're in a group of people in a tent, but you can't talk to them. And mm -hmm. you have to meditate for 10 hours. And at night, you listen to a, a Buddhist guru for one hour who passed away and he gave you the training mainly focusing on breathing. Very, very interesting technique because it, it allows you to understand that everything is uh, temporal, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what, is, what I mean by that is like uh, the temporal is the, 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 the sensation of, ple of uh, please in your body and the se sensation of pain is, is, is going. During one hour, you go through a lot of pain, a lot of pleasure at the same time. And you, by, by doing meditation, you can really truly understand that, you know? So it, it was a big training and and I thought, okay, if, if Iblis is alive and he's coming after me, I, I'd rather go to a, to a mountain and live as a monk. Therefore, I, I will be protected. But then I realized Iblis is everywhere. So it's not a question of location, really. It's more a question of uh, who is having your back. And uh, then I realized, okay, I must... I must Which team to be on? <laughs> I must return to, to God. So I tried to look for God and I, I started with my first religion, which was Christianity. And I, I realized, okay, there's something that is not fitting into my heart, I almost baptized again. And then I realized the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah, they are the true shield for me. They are the true protection. And I can truly, 10 years down the line after I made that decision, I can tell you, I can vouch for it. I can testify that if it was not for this guidance, I, I don't even know if I would be still alive or I, I, won't, I don't know if I would have been able to, to do what I did in 10 years time. And uh, for me now it's, uh, I achieved the goal, you know. I, I want to go till the end and be with the one uh, with the ones who are coming back. I wish I'm gonna be there, but to be honest, I'm I'm, I'm very uh, full of gratitude with what Allah gave to me in terms of guidance. And but you know, it's once you tap into guidance, you never want to stop. It's like a fountain. You can never say I had enough guidance. Mm -hmm. Who who are we to say that? But my point is that I feel already overwhelmed by what Allah gave to me. Now I want to share. You know, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's what I want the most because I see people are suffering. They are broken hearts. And, and when you kind of, when you think that you know part of the solution, you want to you wanna give uh, spiritual food to people. You know, like we talk a lot about, uh, okay, fasting, breaking the fast, feeding the poor. Of course, that's a physical need. And uh, poverty leads to um, uh, uh, kufur, you know, like poverty leads to uh, falling out of faith. So, those are important things to tackle, but it seems the whole world is just focusing on physical need. Yeah. But the, I would say the spiritual need is much higher, is much higher and is much urgent. You know, when COVID started, I was interviewed on an Egyptian TV and I was telling people that now we have an emergency because of this uh, virus, but what about the millions of people who are dying every, every day without knowing who is Allah and without knowing the Prophet Moses? And there's no urgency. Yeah. There's no urgency urgency to to share that message the, the people especially the muslims they are not on board with this we are not interested in the mission of the prophet system. we are not i can now testify that after 10 years the muslim are not i will say the christians are more interested in the mission of jesus and the christians are waiting for him to come back we we muslim we are not i've never heard any muslims say oh, i wish i wish jesus will come back soon i never heard and this is this is, I have to tell you, uh, Brother Sani, this is freaking me out. Because I said, how can we be so detached of that need? I mean, how come the Christians uh, own that theme more than us? We must ask ourselves, like, we claim to be the true lover of Isa, as a matter of fact, I call my first son Isa, and I love him so much, and I love Maryam so much, and how come the Christian are the forefront of that, uh, uh, of that um, longing. We're not longing for him. We're not even longing for the one who's coming before him. That's why I'm telling you. No, because the Muslims are busy with... Um, Alal, let's, uh, where can we with, find Alal with the, food? With the thin line of uh, shirk when it comes to Isa and Maryam, that's what they argue about because they don't want to say, oh, don't do that. It's like a Christian. Oh, don't do that. Don't do this. Um, 
you know, like even if you like candles, it's a problem, you know, uh, whereas the Ottomans were doing in sometimes using candles for some occasion, and this is totally fine, al um, uh, creed, but uh, talking about shaitan, after, after he became Muslim, then we, we also um, went on a journey and discovered that shaitan, if you, if there is an ego that is attached to that, and shaitan is usually the sheikh of your ego. It re, it's, it's even in Ramadan, you can see that Ramadan supposedly the shaitan is locked, but it, it's obvious that I think before uh, the shaitan leaves, it kind of, they, they give secret training to the ego that <laughs> some people even become more satanic in Ramadan. It does nothing to, the desire is still there, the, the adab is still low, the, the, you know, like you are breaking people's heart, you are rude to people, um, you know, you, you do crazy things, even in Ramadan when the shaitan is not there. So if you talk about shaitan, it's not just external, definitely. And I think that's what's lacking. Like a lot of people don't want to study to understand themselves and the ego that is attached to that. And the, they fall into that. The track. bottom line is the Muslim Ummah is heedless of the signs that are coming. I mean, it's clear we are in Akhiru Zaman, but they don't want to know that. And the Prophet Sallam warned us, he told us, what I fear the most for you, for you is the love of the dunya, right? Mm -hmm. So because of this love of the dunya, the Muslim Ummah doesn't have an interest to know and find out and to wake up because we are in love with the dunya. So when yeah. you are not in love with the dunya, you, 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 you are, I'm not in love. I'm ready to go. I mean, recently, Alain Delon, the most uh, biggest French actor, he said in an interview, what is this world? How can you be in love with this world? It's disgusting. How can you be, in, what, what this love has to offer? And we're talking about a non-Muslim. So mm -hmm. Alain Delon, who is a super, is the Brad Pitt of the French, okay? He's, uh, he's not a Muslim as far as I know, but he understood the reality more there are 90% of the Muslim that I know. He understood that this world is worth nothing. And, and uh, you, you, all we are preparing for is to return to Allah and, 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 uh, and in good condition. But we are, I have to be a bit alarmist here. We are in great danger spiritually. Like if people don't understand that right now, you know, it's time to push the red button. Maybe that's why I'm wearing a, a red cap right now. Uh, it's, a co <laughs> it's a coincidence that you, you push my... <laughs> It's time. It's time because, um, especially the, over the past two years, we are. And you look at what happened in in Turkey recently. Look what's happening now around the world. I mean, it's not only happening in Turkey. It's earthquakes are happening. Allah Subhanahu Taala is sending us big physical signs. But before, only the ones who have who have eyes and understanding could understand where we are going. But now, even uneducated people, even people who don't have spirituality, can see things are moving and. You know, and but but the funny thing is the ones who are the in heedless the most, it's the Muslim. I can tell you, I can say the Christians over the past years, because I do follow them on some podcasts, I do, you know, it's still some uh, I, I I can see they are much more aware of the challenges that we're going through. They are much more aware of the threats, including the spiritual threats. But maybe I'm in the wrong community <laughs> in the sense like the some Muslim, but I I I, I still uh, talk to, uh, you know, maybe you have a different community, but uh, the majority of the people I know as Muslim right now, I can totally tell you they are uh, in, uh, I think at this point is denial. That's what, that's the word I will, I will say. I'm actually quite astonished myself and saddened and, and, and upset and disturbed because sometimes the most vehement denials come from Muslim people. When we see what's happening in terms of clear, imminent signs of, of, of what's happening in the world and to think that this is not, you know, the imminent time for Akhir Zaman, his mind is astonishing to me that Muslims will say, oh no, we have a lot of time, it's going to get better, people are going to improve. Whereas day after day, things seem to be getting worse and worse. So, I mean, I, we hit on a subject that I'm quite passionate about too. I mean, the way that we were taught and raised, our shiuch, every single dua ended with praying for Imam Mahdi and for the return of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. I just started a series of videos on, on Jesus, the penultimate prophet of Islam, the penultimate prophet of God, that is trying to reclaim Jesus. He's our prophet. Yeah. He is our prophet. And we're the actually ones that are following Jesus, alayhi salam. Yes. We're the ones that are praying as he did, saying, you know, speaking as he did, living as he did, eating as he did, and, and there's much more, inshallah. And uh, this is very important uh, topic you're doing. I'm also starting in French to to talk about Jesus more, and uh, 
it's something we start we must start to get passionate about you know if you truly love someone you talk about it you know if you don't love someone you don't talk about him so it's really upsetting you know and i'm not even going to go as far as jesus i will just talk about our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi you know like that's why we're doing this film the last hope uh yeah. to bring converts from all over the world you know i was in south africa when this came into my heart we were uh, screening freedom our film first film we did with zara uh, featuring uh, 50 converts from 25 countries and the first country where we launched the film was in freedom for freedom day in april in, jo Africa. in Johannesburg, and I, I, I was invited by someone in his house, and there was a poem about Rasul and he was saying, don't you know I'm the prophet of Islam, don't you know who I am, and I started to cry, mm. because I realized, subhanAllah, they don't know, people in South America, 500 million people, they don't know who is our prophet, Sallallahu like, he's not, after 14 centuries, the Muslims have failed to make him the number one person that is the most famous in the world, like, he should be, by now, more famous than even Isa, Sallallahu but it's not. For example, how many Muslims know the, the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sassam comparing to how many people know the name of, of Jesus? Mariam is in, most everybody knows. We don't even know and, and we don't even care. And, and this is the, the situation of the Ummah. And we, have, we are not beyond this project. We are not beyond the mission of the Prophet Sassam, which is to yes, spread Islam all over the world. It's very clear, you know, and it was a mission of the Ottomans as well. Sultan Fatih mission was very clear. That's why he was praised so much by the Prophet Sallallahu because his mindset was global because why? You want global social justice. You want global love. You want global truth. You cannot say no, only this part of the world can have and the rest they will, no. So the, the, this is the big frustration. Yes, we, we build masjid. Yes, we're going to feed millions of people this Ramadan. Yes, it's true. But how much money is going to be given and put into projects or visions that clearly are in line with what the Prophet ﷺ wants to do. And one this of is... the goals we wanted to do is there is a lot of, believe it or not, misconception on the Prophet ﷺ. A lot of people, a lot of groups out there treat him like he's dead, like dead, dead. Like he's nowhere connected to us. This is very, it's very sad actually. Yeah. Like, And we used to be uh, that type of Muslims who really like, you know, he's just an, an idea. And yeah. it's very hard to feel that Islam is very much a life, way of life. It really does feel before for us uh, as a religion. But then when you know that, um, you know, there are inheritors of the Prophet and Salam, there are, there are ways that you can connect to him and everything like that, you, under, you start to understand that Allah didn't leave us alone at all. Um, yeah. And there, it was because, and before when the COVID started, we were kind of... Um, we were kind of uh, we pulled back from the society because we we thought the world is gonna like not end but like it's gonna go in a very dark place. So um, we we felt like it was a bit unfair in the sense like okay we have the entity that we cannot see and then we have all these scholars who have difference of opinions, one thousand opinion on the same hadith, and they're just constantly fighting. You don't know who to follow, and we thought Allah just leave us like this. Like you you can't. Yeah. You know, like we, we felt like it's, I, I felt, I started to feel like it's, it's a bit unfair, but I was, I felt guilty to, to feel that way, but I felt like it's so unfair. It's like, it's the biggest fitna that uh, in many hadiths we say, this is the biggest fitna that mankind is going to go through the fitna of the jug. But then it's like, okay, it's the biggest fitna. And then you have the entities you cannot see. And then you have all these agents of shaitan working to destruct the world. And then it's like, who is there? Like, you know, like, so we felt a bit like left alone. And um, there are a lot of uh, Muslims who, when they talk about Rasulullah, is really an idea. It's really an idea. And that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to highlight to people that, no, he's he's still there the, somewhere, somehow. The bottom line is chapter 18, Surah Kaf, is supposed to be the chapter we study the most. Uh, every Friday, we not only have to recite it, but we have to understand it. Right, and there are five stories in it. Many scholars they only talk about four, but they forget the middle one, which is about sh shaitan. Yeah. It's ten, ten ayat about it. And then, of course, there's this story of Khidr and Musa salam. And what Allah is telling us is to find your Khidr, hmm. is to tell us Musa. So, who are we? Are we better than Musa? Salam? Are we better than the Prophet Muhammad? Salam? And this is the thing we are. If there's one thing from this podcast that people should remember about what I said and Zara said, is this. There are some people, some sheikh, 
who are legitimate, who are good, and there are a few, and you must try to find one that is connected to you and that actually uh, you belong. And, and then this is where there is safety. Because, of course, we don't want to be people of despair, uh, what we are saying in this podcast. We want to bring the good news is that you can still find uh, in the Muslim world, um, some are hidden, some are more uh, public, but they are. And Allah SWT has been, uh, will never let us alone, especially in this time. But you must start this journey. And that's why Musa AS says to his apprentice, uh, when they lost the fish, he said, I will not stop. Uh, until I find. So what Allah subhanahu wa is saying to us is that you must start to embark on a journey to find your spiritual master. And, and you must start, especially in Akhiru Zaman. And I think you made a podcast about that. I, I, I watched it, uh, um, you know, the importance of a sheikh uh, in Islam. And, and this is uh, something that people have neglected. And this is why they cannot connect with the Prophet Sassam. They cannot. You know. And we reconnected with this concept when we made Hijra to Turkey, when we studied the history uh, that happened when we had the Khilafah, basically, and all the sultans had a sheikh. Every yeah. single one of them. We didn't know that. We didn't know that. Not and by the way, now there are a group of people that are riding on the Air to Grul series. Fever, fever. <laughs> they are doing... Um, they are making money out of this. They are inviting a bunch of people all over the world to, to do, do a, tour. a tour, but they will never talk about the relationship of the Sultan with a Sheikh. They, they will say, never. Uh, so this is the what's happening. We know that because we live also in Turkey, by the we, way. We've seen the groups that come. They just, Domabachi, all the palaces. Even in Malaysia now, they're doing courses on Ottomans. But guess but, what? Yeah. Uh, Emir Sultan, nothing. nothing. Um, uh, yeah. All the Sheikh that supported the, uh, you know. Sultan, so so no, this nothing. is a big uh, issue because people are not aware of this, this massive support that have been av available for 600 years for the Ottomans. And that's one of the key components of the success. Yeah. And we got also disconnected it's... with that where as Malaysians, because when the British came to colonize us, they changed our history as well. They, they made us forget, uh, they changed our history books. Uh, they were, you know, like a lot of things that were omitted out and actually changed to make us not realize that that has always been the case. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the youth are not discovering you know, that. We so, don't want to go into politics because maybe that's not the objective of this podcast, but uh, politics, we are doing politics with ourselves every day. And we're doing politics with our ego. You know, every day we are deciding if we're going to preta or not, we're going to decide. This is politics. You know, at the end of the day, everything, uh, you can't take away politics for your life internally and externally. It's, it's a matter of doing things or not. It's a matter of convincing ourselves of not to do something. You yeah. know, so uh, th this is... So we also, uh, in Halis Media now, we try to uh, bring series and things that focus also on history. Because mm -hmm. we really believe that if you don't know yeah. your own history, the wrong ones are going to write it for you. And a lot of the groups that are going around and uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, segregative ideologies they are actually not aware of their own history and how it got created. So that's why when we meet Hijra to Turkey, we learned a lot about history that was hidden uh, mm -hmm. from us because there is a lot of Orientalist version online that is not true. Because, you know, if you talk about spirituality, you must talk about the masters of spirituality and the master of spirituality, the, the last one at least, were the Ottomans. Yeah. You know, like you have to give them tribute for that because your name is Ihsan, right? Uh, yes, the yes. Ottomans master of Ihsan. This is why people ask me why you love Ottomans so much. Because as a French, we were at some point on top of the world. We are ruling the world. Who do you want me to respect in the Muslim tradition? If not first and foremost, the Ottomans. Of course, the Sahaba, of course, 100%, all the prophets, the prophets, but the last ones that I can tap into. I, I have a, really We have a castle in France. It's called Versailles top castle visited in the world. When I go to uh, Dolmabache, I can connect. I can see the vision. You can so, understand why the French used to fear the Ottomans yeah. and actually were shy about it. Like even his mom, his mom uh, came to Istanbul. She was so amazed by the art. The calligraphy. The calligraphy and everything. Else. The Ottomans, they talk to your senses. Yeah. The test, the food is great. The, the azan is loud. The Everything. Everything. Yeah. So that's why we, we so want awaken. to tell the people, like, you want to learn about spirituality? 
that that knowledge is available is still there and the country and you are right now in turkey so we, we yeah. you know we are returning to turkey for the last 10 days we are before that we will do our umrah and visit uh, professor salam makam in madina sure. inshallah but we can't wait to return to turkey to experience ramadan because the best ramadan for me in the world is in turkey mm. the spirituality the love the love of the prophet you sure. know is is the highest there you know so yeah. so that's why like um Turkey has still a, has a lot to offer. Yes, it has become secular. Yes, it has some issue, but where else to go? Like yeah. where else to go? When you know that thousands of Aliyah and, and some prophets have been buried in that land, mm -hmm. you know, it's-, it's The uh, energy is different there. We, we are flying when we are in Turkey. And when we go to Konya, we live three hours away from Konya. We live two hours away from Antalya. So we're not too far. We know, we know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a village where there are more sheep than people. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to connect when you guys come out here because I'll be here uh, up until towards the end of Ramadan, inshallah. And okay. you, know, you're speaking, have... you guys are really speaking about things that are very close to my heart. I mean, the last two years I've been spending a lot of time in Turkey uh, because of this, because of the rich history, because of the pe the presence that's here, because they were carrying the last Islamic Khilafah, and they were. And the reason it was so special and the reason it was so blessed was precisely because they had a, such a strong spiritual foundation. And when you go to the mosque, you go to the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, and you see that the tomb of uh, the Sultan, any of their great sultans, the tombs, the tomb of the Sheikh is right next to them, typically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, Subhanallah, you guys. I mean, we could. I would love to just continue this conversation for hours on so many of these different topics. But I want to bring yes. it now back towards just as okay. we, you know, make sure we have time to discuss. Right. You're talking about the state of the world that we find ourselves in, the state of the, the, the world and the state of this ummah. And so what is it, you know, and in a sense, also the Muslims having fallen asleep towards their duty, their obligation, their responsibility. Allah said, you're the best of people. You're commanded to enjoin good, prohibit evil. You're commanded to carry this message to the ends of the earth. And we seem to have, as a, as a whole speaking, fallen asleep. So I would like to now ask, what are you guys doing with Halas Media? What is Halas Media? <laughs> What are you producing? I want to have you maybe share and um, tell us a little bit about the, the mission and the intent yeah. of Halas Media and the products that you're producing. Okay. So first of all, you know, I come from an international reporter background. So when I became a Muslim, I was a bit tired of the propaganda against Islam. So I thought I want to do something in the field of media. And I was with a Turkish brother and I asked him, how should I call my company? And I wanted to call it Ikhlas because the world is lacking of Ikhlas, sincerity. And this word, this, there was a company who took it, but I didn't want to. So I asked him, what is the closest in Turkish language? He said, well, actually, um, Alice is pure. It's kind of close. And then if you reverse the word, it, Sila means weapon. And media is now used as a weapon against Islam. So I thought, so okay, that's so interesting. Meaning. That's a double meaning. You know, it's a subliminal message uh, mm -hmm. for the people who listen. Because there are some people who love subliminal stuff, <laughs> if you know who I'm talking about. So we, as a um, lover of Ottomans, we also know about coding, signs, numbers, subliminality. We, we can also play in that realms. So uh, then I, I moved to Malaysia, I met Zara. And, you know, without Zara, I have to say from the very beginning, Alice Media is really like, um, uh, it's really uh, because of her. You know, like if I didn't have my wife to do this job, yes, I'm a maybe good speaker. I have some good ideas, but the person that implements everything is, is really Zara. You know, like all the videos, uh, the editing, like she's a very fast uh, self learner. She can learn everything on YouTube, how to edit. So basically we started the project with Freedom, uh, which is the theme uh, we I used before that, I used to take care of new Muslims. I had a project called New Muslim Care uh, with another organization. And uh, the vision was to support new Muslim all over the world after they become Muslim, because a lot of, uh, a lot of them, they, they leave after a few years Islam, due to lack of social support. So for some reason, I, I was attached to this cause and it never really left me. Even when I tried to resign, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala slapped me and I had to come back to the field. And so it's, um, it's a very interesting thing. And when I meet you, I will explain to you the, a lot of reason behind and it's also linked to Turkey. So uh, Freedom was a big success uh, in 10 countries. We screened the film in 25 cities. The last uh, country was uh, New Zealand. We went there uh, one month after the massacre in Christchurch, mm -hmm. you know, the, the famous uh, uh, massacre with 51 people. And Zara was pregnant seven months. We went there. We screened the film in front of 200 white Christian 
and they just loved it. They thought, you guys share the same values than us. It should be on national TV. Okay, we don't agree. You say Jesus Actually, is not the son of yeah. God, but everything else we, we accept, we love uh, to have it, you here. It made them believe we're on the same team. Yeah. The Christians said, oh, because of your film, we're on the same team, actually. We're people of God, and we don't like the demoralization of society, so we're the same team. Mm -hmm. It's 50 converts from 25 countries in 50 languages, so each convert speaks in his language and with subtitles, so it touches your heart. If you're from Poland, you will hear someone talk Polish to you. If you're from Mexico, someone will speak Spanish to you in the film. So yeah. in 90 minutes, it's a bit like the Avengers. <laughs> you have like 50 converts talking to you, uh, in a very organic way, and it's not preachy, it's just their life. This is what they feel. This and is we what we didn't script them. We didn't script, and to be honest, this is the type of film that it was made in heaven to me because the script is really given by the converts, and even ourselves, we just had to submit to it. And, and uh, so we started with this film. Then we, uh, when we toured in UK, the, there's an organization who liked uh, what we do with convert. They asked us to organize a, a new Muslim uh, conference. So we came up with a brand uh, called the New Muslim World Conference. It's a, a dream that I had with only convert speakers. We started that in 2018 in UK, Manchester. We did the digital version in Malaysia 2019. Those are the two main things. We organize events and we also produce content. And uh, now we realize we need to be more present on social media because we neglected that part for a long time, which I think was a mistake. Uh, and now we have three channels. Our biggest channel is Alice Media. We have 13,000 uh, uh, subscribers at the moment. Uh, and uh, the vision is basically to introduce the pure message of Islam through the most innovative media platform. So this is the vision. Um, and now we are also focusing on teaching about history, the Ottomans, uh, because it's very important for us since we live in Turkey. You know, subhanAllah, I mean, I, I was a computer science engineering major in high school, in a uh, university. And because I took classes in Ottoman history, I started falling in love with history and, and especially with Ottoman history. And I, I literally, by the end, changed my major to a history major and then found my shift that happens to be based originally from, from, you know, Turkey and Cyprus and so on. So I have a strong connection to this. Now, okay, so in the world that we live in and in the age that we find ourselves in and in the crisis that we find ourselves in, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a war in terms of ideas, in terms of faith, in terms of culture. Really, it's between faith and, and the lack of faith between belief and unbelief. And yeah. I also do try to point out that it really is coming down to faith versus the opposite of faith, which is kufr, uh, unbelief. And, um, you know, we are severely lacking in as, as a community um, on this battlefront, and especially in terms of supporting the, the people who are actually on the front lines of this battlefield. So what I maybe want to ask you guys about is the role of media in in the world that we find ourselves in and with regards to this mission because there, there's no jihad that we're going to go and conquer lands now there's no khilafa there's no jihad okay so what is the role of media in terms of fulfilling our duty now as muslims and as believers to carry the word of allah or, or the truth um to humanity and also right. what i'd like you to maybe touch on is because i don't think enough muslims understand the importance of supporting this cause because no, other we don't yes. And it's this is where you fall behind. This is you know, where you fall drastically behind. Yeah. Whereas other people uh, have a lot of funding to promote and support the propagation of their ideas. You are uh, living in the land of media, Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So the people who are behind this project, they, they understand the game and they are smarter than us. So this is with, with media, you can control the world. You can control the ideas, how people feel, how people will behave because you shape from a very early age, their minds. And that's what Walt Disney was really good at, yeah. you know? Every girl in the world wants to find their prince now. This is the whole, how you shape young girl to uh, accept this and, and want this typical lifestyle and everything you start at very young age. So media is critical. Uh, media is everything. Even in the time of Rasulullah, let's go back to, to that time. Who were the media people? The poets. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of battle you know, of poems. And that was the only media available at the time. Then the Quran came as a media. Yeah. The Quran is a media. The Quran is a media. Is a tool of communication, right? Debunking all the propaganda that was going on, basically. And the false belief. Yeah. So the problem is that in the Quran, it's not, I mean, it is specific, but you must support Islam. You must support the mission of the Prophet Islam. But 
yes, you must build a masjid. Yes, you will get uh, maybe a house in Jannah. And yes, you must print Quran, but maybe will stay in, a, in an embassy for the rest of, of its lifetime. But the problem is the Muslim, they want to uh, invest in something tangible that they can see, they can touch. Yeah. And specifically, they can put the name on it. Yeah. yeah? So media is not like that. The, the other ones on the other camp, they don't need to put their name. What they want is to control you. And they're very successful in that. They are, they have they are, a much. They are doing Fisa bi Shaitan. Fisa bi Shaitan. Yeah, Fisa yeah. bi Shaitan. So I'm just going to give you an example. Yeah. There's a fund, there's a one project that was a, a film in France that, a documentary, yeah. They were promoting, um, uh, yeah. a, let's say, they were promoting deviant, <laughs> oh, deviant stuff. We oh, don't want to enter into the mental, but they were, they, are, they were promoting a way of marriage that is just odd. Okay. okay. So they got one time donation. From one big foundation, that's it. Call us. Yeah. We have a film about the Prophet. It's, it's, it, we barely can't get $50,000. And we have a track record. We have a film in the past, Freedom. We raised $100,000. It took us three years. We have to explain to the Muslim. And they always ask us, where is the money for us? They always, they always look for a return on investment and, and say, there's no return on investment. We can't charge non Muslim to watch, to watch our film, film on our profits. And this is the reality, brother. I have to say to you, it's shameful at this point in time because why? It's not like we are hundreds doing what we're doing. We have a, a film that even French Christian monk Freedom loved. We have uh, uh, basically Freedom is a film that the non Muslim gave eight out of 10 on, on, on scoring. Yeah. We have a track record. Okay, we didn't make it online because we have no budget. Actually, we took our film out, out of internet. We, now we are selling it on Vimeo because uh, this is not a film for us to watch really online. It's more on a screening because it's 90 minutes. Now everybody cannot stay more than 10 minutes without having yeah. this and watching. So it's very difficult to, but it's a 90 minute film. So we are competing with a, a film that had a six, how many, six million euro budget uh, in many languages and they don't sell the film, they give it away because it's propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we are competing. I'm not even talking about Hollywood, forget about it. We are not in that field. We are in the field of making documentary that will shape the mind and the heart of people in the future. To give an example, I was the first recipient of that when in the 90s yeah. Christianity was going down. Uh, there was a lot of documentaries about the Dalai Lama, like about Tibet, about being a monk. And, in Europe. And me, I was, uh, I'm, I was like 15 years old. I remember I went to my mom and I loved it. I thought, oh, it's so nice. The Dalai Lama is such a nice guru. I want to do Buddhism. And because of those documentaries, I started to become Buddhist. Yeah. It is because of documentaries with very low budget. And that there I are a lot of documentaries but, uh, that are out there on Vimeo. It's because of that, that the children say uh, there's no boy or girl now. So documentaries always work in shaping people's mind. Now, there is a lot of uh, groups that are not happy about how Allah created them. And these people were all influenced by documentary. Huh? And the Muslims... It's very yeah. hard to if, teach If them. I leave Islam tomorrow, yeah. I just have to do one phone call and I get <laughs> one million in my bank account to make a document. Just one phone call. This famous French uh, combat YouTuber with millions of views on the internet just left Islam and this is his story. I've, I get the money, no, no question asked, and I get red carpets. Yeah. You'll but, get an award. So this is the thing. <laughs> this is the problem. So we, we are... We are so impressed with Shahada and converts. We like, oh, mashallah, now we have this big phenomena of new converts. And I know you met some, you, you talk about some famous one recently on your podcast and oh, it's such a big deal, but it doesn't prove anything. You know, like at the end of the day, we are still forming to the sea. We are boasting about our numbers. It doesn't matter. Like our numbers doesn't matter. There's no quality. There's no quality. I can tell you, I can testify that. The very little quality is in our Ummah in terms of vision. I'm not talking about skills. We have a lot of skills. We have a lot of money. But visionary people, I always told my, my, my wife, freedom, people will understand this film when, when we will be dead. You know, it's like they will understand, oh, that's what he meant by freedom. We don't have, we don't have more freedom in our life anymore. We can't get out of our house. We can't do this anymore. We can't pay. No, actually, the non-Muslims understand the 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 the, uh, the the value of freedom more. Actually, when we wanted to do our trailer, we got blocked many times to do ads. Our ads were never approved. Mm -hmm. 
because yeah. the nerve is understand. Sign. It's a good yeah. sign, though. We, we get everything. It's blocked because it's their platform. So they understand that freedom can really change because the mind. Because sh- Shaitan, his biggest value, his soul to the world is be free to do whatever you want. Yeah. Burn your life. You know what? There's no law. And by the way, there's someone who's coming very soon with the same narrative. He's going to say, first of all, he's going to say, there's no religion. There's no need of religion. There's one that you must follow. It's mine. And by the way, everything is accepted. So he's coming to tell you that. And the people are going to say, yeah, we want to be free. We want to be free. And why I'm passionate about that? Because I'm French. And we are the first one to cut the head of our kings. And then it spread all over the world. And and, and we, we destroyed the... Uh, the kingship of many nations with this narrative yeah. to be free to what you still have a master but you don't know his name you don't know his leash but mm-hmm. he's still your master you just can't see him you can't smell it but he's there and he's controlling you so freedom we made it because we knew the freedom of people will be taken away and covid happened and i think our freedom get a little bit reduced so now we thought, okay, the people are going to be stuck, but at least they can tap into that spiritual freedom to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be worshipped and the, the, the way he wants to be worshipped. And this is why we made that thing, because at the end of the day, this can never be stolen from you. This is the, what Allah promised us. And, and we, we know the people are becoming desperate uh, because the, the physical world is becoming more and more uh, uncertain. Now there's a banking crisis that's going to wipe out many, many people in the couple of months, what are they going to do with their freedom, with their so-called freedom? They're not going to be able to do anything. And, and this is why there's an urgency of spirituality. But the Muslim, they don't understand that. We've been talking to millionaires. Now you're going to say, maybe you're not calling at the right door. We've been talking to millionaires. But they look at us we, we, They look at us like, yeah, but I'm building a masjid in, in this place. That I'm, okay, you're building a masjid. How many masjids there are in this district? There are 10. But I'm, br- I'm bringing the 11 one. Oh, mashallah, it's great for you. You're going to go and to I'm Jannah. Print, I'm printing a Quran with a different design, different type yeah, I'm of print, I'm printing a Quran. Um, it's going to be uh, given uh, in Europe. In a, it's going to be stay in embassy and I have 10 million budget for that. So we are not lacking of money in the Ummah. We're just lacking of vision. We can blast 200 million for a World Cup. It was 200 billion. B- billion. billion. We blasted 200 billion to. Did we ever spend 1 billion to spread Islam? Never, never, never. It's, it's mind boggling to me. Yeah. It, it's tragic. It's mind boggling. It's painful because most people don't understand people who are doing this type of work. They, oftentimes they're just struggling to, to survive and yeah. just, just to do the work of Dawah. Um, and for some reason, I don't know what, how people think in the Muslim community that this stuff just magically will appear or fund itself if we don't support these projects. So you guys here, you guys at Halas Media have done some amazing films, Freedom, you're working in another one, The Last Hope. Um, yeah. Do you have any campaigns now for fundraising for any of your projects? How can people find you and, and support your work? Well, they, we are on LaunchGood, which is a crowdfunding platform, and uh, we already raised around two hundred thousand dollars since two thousand seventeen on LaunchGood, and we have this campaign, uh, Mohammed the Last Hope. Uh, the we are interviewing converts from all over the world, and the objective is for them to describe how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, impacted their life. So it's more like a personal thing, and we want to use their testimony to inspire the Muslim and the non-Muslim to look at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from a different angle not only a Sira type of angle where we know his life and his achievement, but how he resonates in the heart of each individual. And I think we're going to find some gems. I mean, it, it's Rasul Salam is, he, he has an impact on our life in a, in a different level, you know, and uh, he's so broad. He's so magnificent and, and huge in his, in his legacy that even if you interview one, one thousand great Muslim, you, you can't tap even in one percent of who he is. Is, is how how yeah. big is it? and why we call it the last hope because he is the last hope mm-hmm. he is he's the last prophet and and what the people need right now is hope especially what's coming you know if people think that 2020 2023 was a hard time they, they better get ready because now 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 we are entering into a very difficult time okay so the last hope is coming out you've got a launch good campaign to support that project and you also have the film freedom which you've done 
and how can people see that? You said it's so on people YouTube. People can buy Freedom uh, on our, we have the link on our website. We have the, the www.thefreedomfilm.org. So the th, the freedomfilm.org. Slash view. Slash view. They so can, you can see all the languages. It's available in English. It's available in French, the 90 minute version. And we have a 30 short minute version. short version in Turkish and Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Yeah. And the main website for, for you guys, is it Halas Media or is it the film? We haven't built it yet, actually. The I would say yeah. the freedomfilm.org is the main website. It's the only website we have. We have to make now alismedia.com, but um, uh, we have... Um, no, because we had a, a website for the film and then we had the website for the conference because the conference, there was a lot of registration. Mm-hmm. So it was separate. We just have to reconcile it. But the, if you it. want to follow us, the best thing is on YouTube, Alice Media. And on Instagram also, we are starting to do Instagram as well. So those are the two main platform. We have also TikTok for the youngster, but we are not so active on TikTok at the moment. It's mainly Instagram and uh, YouTube. But just I want to say about the campaign on Good, if you can give every day $1, we, have, uh, we are competing right now to earn bonuses throughout the Ramadan. So if people, just $1 per day, if you can be consistent in doing that until the end of Ramadan, we are engaged on a competition daily. And we already earned like a $1,500 bonus the past two days because the more people give at least $1, the more chance we can earn bonuses. Mm -hmm. And we will choose one day to compete uh, for the most amount, the most raised amount. We might be in Medina when we do that. And we only honestly, at this point, we just want to pray for some wealthy Muslim to be on the same page than us. At the end of the day, we don't uh, ask for millions, but there is a minimum uh, that we need to reach a certain quality. And it's yeah. what I'm worried about, but it's not the quality, it's more the reach. But now for the rich, you need a lot of money. If you want to reach millions of non-Muslim, you're going to need a lot of money. You need a serious team beyond that. And we don't have this, you know, and um, the yeah. freedom has been praised by many. It has been seen by millionaires. Like freedom, for example, even the poster, but, yeah. uh, we chose a hijabi that has blue eyes. It's clearly a convert and clearly, and we choose he, uh, a woman, even though we got criticized because it's a woman, but <laughs> Because a lot of the West, uh, they say uh, hijab is anti-freedom. So imagine that type of image with the hijabi, blue eyes, freedom saying on billboards in non-Muslim countries. Yeah. It would have spoken so much volume, but we mm. don't have the budget. We have a lot of plans. We have a lot of vision. But There's another theme I, I personally sponsored. Uh, I put 5,000 on this. It's called The Voice Beyond the Veil. She's talking about hijab. So when I became Muslim, I immediately start to invest into doing documentary with my christian manager and we went to southeast asia to interview famous uh, hijabis and to ask them why they wear the hijab and what's the spirituality behind it so it's a film i'm doing with a christian you see and uh, as he was doing the film with me his wife started to wear the hijab mm-hmm. you know interesting and now yeah. i think you know in iran there's a big movement to remove the hijab yeah. and it's yeah. gonna spread it's is gonna spread and the hijab is a very spiritual thing uh for the woman and and you know you're wearing a, a hat like me and i always encourage the brother to do the same you know we should also support our sisters and to show our identity as well in the streets and not be ashamed of that many muslims they think it's just they always say it's just a sunnah for me it's a very important sunnah because first it gives you honor as a man like the beard uh, when you when when you don't wear the hat you know, you girls can check you out more and things like when you wear a hat, you already say, I'm a Muslim. Uh, many people have beard, even football professionals have beard, but they don't have the beard, the hat and the ring. Once you have those three things, then you, you know. And so we, the objective of this film is going to be to talk about hijab for women, but also for men. So we, we have this second film that we want to promote. But again, uh, will the Ummah will follow? Will the Ummah understand? Uh, that's another question. I, we, we just need to find the few ones that are, are visionary and uh, it's going to click and we're going to be able to finally perform. Because the problem, you see, in Ramadan right now, by right, we should not even do fundraising. We should do uh, videos and engage the normal team. And, but we cannot afford. We need to go on launch good, unfortunately. And you know... And the problem about crowdfunding is you have to reveal your strategy. You have to reveal your plans. Because you have to reveal your plans for people to support it. And that's not necessarily 
the best because you have to say what you must do and you don't want to reveal everything but then people yeah. think it's not credible if you don't really reveal everything so there for is example, always... do you think ones like let's say the ones who are documented to pervert the the, the children's mind do you think they go online and say <laughs> we have a, an idea to pervert children's minds so they become more um, uh, satanic in the future Uh, we need one million dollars. No, they don't. They just take one phone call and say, "Look, I have this project. How many people are you going to impact? How many children do you think you're going to be able to to change?" Okay, deal. That's it. That's why we are. It's an unfair competition. There's no foundation so far that we know. We we met a lot. The it's part, very reactionary. The part I'm going to tell you. It's very reactionary. The 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 Muslim who have the money are Muslim countries. They are foundation, but they don't live in the West. They don't understand us. They don't understand what is Islamophobia. They, 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 they dream in La La Land. They are living in La La Land. Yeah. The only time they go to Paris is for vacation in expensive hotels. They don't feel Islamophobia. They, they don't understand our Western struggle in the US, UK, France, and Europe. They don't understand the, the, our sisters are getting bullied every day. Uh, our brothers are refusing jobs. It's very difficult to stay in Europe, mainly because of Islamophobia, and also mainly because the, the, the Islam that is practiced in the West is, is sometimes very harsh Gosh. and not correct but that's another topic but the, the the there's so much to do but they are in the comfort of a, of a house uh, in malaysia turkey and they say no there's no issue islam is doing very well brother look tarawi there's 1000 people tonight in the masjid islam is islam is doing very well they don't understand so the the muslim in the west they give mashallah they understand the need but they don't have the biggest uh, pockets right no um They don't understand yeah. that the children of the children of everybody else is going to eventually uh, follow what's happening in the West, which is unbelief. Everybody's imitating Western culture, and it's just simply because we don't have anything to counter it properly. Hence the role yeah. of media. Um, Ty, I, I want to really thank you guys for coming on the on the podcast and on this episode, and I hope that we can continue the the uh, conversation. Inshallah. Um, you know, inshallah ta'ala, continue to follow the work that you're doing and support it to the best we can. For everybody that's listening, the freedomfilm.com is where they can go and actually get access to this. Um, I'm sorry again. Freedomfilm.org. The freedomfilm.org um, and get access to that movie, which is amazing, uh, a beautiful film, you know, beautifully shot, beautiful documentary. And also to support on Launch Good, the upcoming project, The Last Hope, that they're hoping yes. to. Uh, release um you know hopefully i think later this year if i'm not mistaken maybe you can put the link in the commentary Absolutely. or some yep. people and, and we uh, will definitely uh, we'll have the links in the create a community of uh just uh, finally uh last words we want to create a community of sincere people we are not expecting uh millions to follow us but we feel like especially on internet and i think you you represent that type of community you You do things with sincerity um, and you, you're helping people. And we, we kind of want to be part of a community where uh, it's a safe zone online where people feel like these people are not here for the money. We're not here for the fame. We are doing the work and we are trying to, we're trying to inspire people because we truly live Islam day by day. I mean, for us, it's a lifestyle. It's Dean. It, Dean is bigger than religion, you know, and, and I think a lot of Muslims are boxed into religion and rituals and, and Islam is a day-to-day -day life. You, you brief Islam, you speak Islam, you know, you, people must smell Islam from you whenever you are, you know, and they, they must feel that you have something special to give to them. Yeah, I mean, all whom I mean, please, uh, beloved brothers and sisters listening, um, support Halas Media, support any, you know, support these projects that are absolutely essential, that, that are necessary in this world. The Islam in the time of our Prophet Sallallahu required support. The Prophet constantly called upon support for the battlefield for people to support. Otherwise, Islam would have been extinguished. And this is the world that we live in now. Islam is real Islam, real faith, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said there will come a time where there will be nothing left of Islam but its name. And so we're at this age where, yes, the Islam exists in form, but but faith is is grossly outnumbered at the moment in terms of uh, resources when it comes to unbelief and in, in the things that are being promoted now at this point i mean i think everybody knows well enough you can't turn on a tv show or, or an advertisement on a billboard without being propagandized towards things that are completely destructive to human society and human culture and family life so beloved brothers and sisters listening please um support halas media the links will be in the description below uh jazakul khairun 
Sister Zara, Brother Julian, we really thank you for coming online. And uh, maybe if I can ask you, maybe just uh, as I ask all of our guests, uh, maybe you can conclude our, our discussion today with a dua supplication. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you uh, for your support and for bringing back Islam to his glory uh, with the support of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, we ask you to guide the people in this month of Ramadan so we find food in the table, but more than that, food in the heart, spiritual food that will be beneficial throughout the whole year. We ask uh, you to unite the Ummah under the flag of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the Aulias who are living proof of his legacy. And we ask you to pray for Brother Ihsan and his community and all the people who are listening. Mm -hmm. And of course, to pray for my wife, our family, the people in Malaysia and Turkey, all the people who are afflicted by all these calamities. Please don't, don't make the burden uh, bigger. Uh, increase uh, the wealth, increase the health so they can be stronger. We need a strong Ummah. And may the, may the Mahdi be soon uh, coming to save us all and and we are waiting for of course Isa to come back may this uh comings be very soon inshallah with your support everything is possible i mean i mean allahumma amin okay. 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 i pray that you enjoyed and benefited from this discussion and episode of soul of islam radio to help us continue to bring you these meaningful conversations regarding spiritual development and faith, do us a favor and give us a positive review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to be listening to this podcast. And if you can think of at least one person who may benefit from this content, please share this episode with them. To learn more about Halas Media and to watch and support their essential films and vital work in the world today, please head over to www.freedomfilm.com. Org. To further connect with me and to continue the conversation, please visit us at www.soulofislamradio.com. With the will and grace of God, I look forward to connecting with you soon. To your divine and eternal success. Mm -hmm.